Hello friends, my name is Sunil Ranjan and I am an English teacher. Now here I have come with the video The Woman Who Had Imagination by H. E. Bates. So I will be giving you the theme of this text in a summary form with points. So if you write down the points then you will be able to score high marks in the examination. First telling you about H. E. Bates. Full name being Herbert Ernst Bates. He was born on 16th May 1905. He was a renowned English short story writer of the 20th century. He was also a great novelist with famous novels like Love for Lydia, an unusual love story. Fair stood the wind for France, one of the best war novels in English and The Scarlet Sword which is based on Kashmir, India. His first novel, The Two Sisters, was published in 1926. Now, most of his stories portray the rural life in Midlands of England, especially Northamptonshire, his native place. He was inspired by Anton Chekhov, who wrote to write short stories. Graham Greene praised Bates as a great short story writer, an English successor to Anton Chekhov. He died on 29th January 1974 in Canterbury, Kent. Now coming to the points. The first point is point number one, story through journey. So you may underline it. So the first point is story through journey. Now moving ahead. The story The Woman Who Had Imagination is about a group of enthusiastic musicians and singers who are moving in a carriage on a country road towards Antonio Cerelli's house. They all are very excited and are, and are enjoying the journey. They are cutting jokes with one another and laughing. So this is the first point. Now the second point is the group in the brake. Brake means the carriage that is pulled by horses. So the second point is the group in the break. Now moving ahead, there is a draper named Alfred. He is more interested in music instead of his business. He has organized a music group named Orpheus Male Voice Glee Singers, which takes part along with other music bands in music competition at Antonio's house every year. He has his wife and son Henry Solly sitting in the carriage also. Now, the next point is Henry Solly. Well, he is the son of Alfred, as I said earlier. So, the heading is, or the point is, Henry Solly. Henry Solly is Alfred's son. He is very sensitive. He looks after his father's shop. He expects no change in his life for the next 50 years and often loses hope about a promising future. He does not like the dummies in his shop and often wishes that one of them should come alive. Well, now coming to the next point. On the country road, uh, in Western society, the village roads are called country roads. So here, so the point is on the country road, the brake moves along the bumpy road and passes through a forest. It stops at an ale house for the members of the group to have drinks. It again moves ahead and passes by a village that has a fortress-like church. There are shouts of ironical laughter and reckless encouragement in the carriage all through the journey again. Now, down in the valley, the sun shines very hot. The carriage passes through a village and there, are, there is a group of haymakers resting and sleeping in the noon heat under the shade of a big tree. They wave and call with sleepy greetings. In the break, the women are enjoying and laughing seeing the country life outside. Under the intense sunshine and the fierce July light, the slow movement of the carriage tends to be un intolerable. Up the hills, the carriage moves so slowly as if the horses pulling it have fallen sick. Downhill, the carriage rolls much faster. Alfred's son Henry Solly shows no interest in the journey. He regrets his coming on such a long journey. All in the carriage near this hear the sound of the birds chirping and cooing. The farmers under the shady trees welcome them warmly. Now, the next point is 
appearance of the young lady Madeline. I repeat, appearance of the young lady Madeline. So here I begin again. At last the whole group enters Antonio's house. Antonio lives with his 28-year-old sister Madeline. Henry gets fascinated and hypnotized by her beauty and figure. She has black beautiful eyes and is married to an abnormal jealous old man. She is tall and slender. She looks very charming in her long maroon colored dress and her shining brilliant eyes. Her voice has a kind of mournful sweetness which fascinates Henry. She smiles at the young Henry with half serious and half vivacious eyes. This is a mischievous solid there is a mischievous solemnity in her voice where Henry Solly says he has lost his way Madeline leaves her old husband behind shuts the door back on him and goes with Henry to show him to his place Henry Solly happens to meet the young lady again at the lake he senses her helpless helplessness mixed with pain and happiness in her eyes now the last point is back home with memories i repeat back home with memories now moving ahead i speak as all members of the group are on their way back sitting silently in the carriage henry begins to think of the young woman who had imagination as told by a fishmonger there Henry begins to feel that the young charming lady really possessed imagination of an enchanting kind that touched his heart deeply. It is dark outside and despite the stars up in the sky it seems to be a breath of fresh morning to Henry that has penetrated his persona an unforgettable experience to last with him forever. So friends here I come to the end of the theme of the story or you may say the summary of the story which i have given with points so if you have subscribed to my channel thank you very much if you haven and if you choose to subscribe i promise that i'll be coming up with quality videos for you from time to time and yes i will keep my promise thank you